It's David Wowie, who are another Eden's 10 best free characters. I've divided this guide up into my personal top 5 support characters, followed by my top 5 damage dealing characters, and I've included some bonus ones in the end who you might be surprised by. Of course, these are just my own opinions. Let me know who your favorite characters are in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, or become a super member and get perks! Shout out to Luce and over 100 new super members who were signed up as part of my latest stream thanks to some very generous viewers. Check out my X channel for more info. One telling point about Another Eden is that even if it's a gacha game, you can actually beat the toughest super bosses with free characters. You'll see countless evidence on YouTube of this. It just takes much, much more work. Here are my top characters based on my own gameplay and from what I've learned from others. Shout out to the Reddit community for sharing some of their thoughts. Now, let's start with support characters. At number 5 we have Ukwaji. Ukwaji is a water blunt user who gets stronger and stronger the more you use him. By turn 20 he can activate Ragnarok state which increases his HP to 9999 and max MP to 999. What a big fella. He also deals significantly more damage at this state. The only problem with this is that he can only do this by turn 20 which is kinda nuts. How a lot of people use Ukwaji is that they put him in the reserves. When he's in the reserves, he restores everyone's HP at the end of every turn, which can be very useful. You unlock Ukwaji by beating his level 195 version and finishing the side quest, journey's end and beginning. I've created a whole guide on him, so check it out. At number 4 we have Cyrus Albright. Cyrus Albright is a multi-element staff user and he, along with Particio and Tithy, is one of the first free collab characters in the game who can be stellar awakened. What makes Cyrus special is that he can activate either Raging Fire Stance, Sacred Water Stance or Thundering Stance depending on which elemental stance you want your team to be in. He can inflict an XL damage attack that increases in damage depending on which elemental stance your team is in. His stellar awakening skill, Magia Synthesis is pretty interesting as he inflicts a simultaneous water, fire and thunder double XL attack on all enemies. But this can be hit or miss, especially if you're fighting an enemy that may absorb some of these elements. Another issue I find with Cyrus is that although he's a great zone setter, his other buff skills only improve his own attacks but not the team's. I'll show you a potentially better option next. You unlock Cyrus, Particio and Tithy from the Octopath Traveler collab. Another multi-elemental zone setter who can kind of do what Cyrus can't is Aisha. Aisha is a staff user with a singing ability who can either set Raging Fire Stance or Sacred Water Stance and the skills will change depending whichever zone you're in. When in Raging Fire Stance, Aisha has skills that can reduce enemy resistance against fire and increase the team's power, intelligence, speed and damage. When in Sacred Water Stance, Asha can reduce the enemy's resistance to water and then decrease the power, intelligence and speed of all enemies. And she's also a Pain and Poison setter which is always useful as I always recommend teams to have a Pain or Poison setting ability in them. You unlock Asha for free in Pulsiful Palace. Check out my guide on her to find out more. At number 2 we have Starkey! Starkey is one of those timeless free characters who I keep seeing pop up in people's super boss battles. I'm always surprised by how people are able to use Starkey against super bosses even today. I think he's the creepiest looking dude in this game, but hey, looks like he's pretty decent. In fact, I've seen the YouTuber 77AE use him against a battle against one of the toughest current super bosses in the game, Icefield's Master. As creepy as I think he looks, Sparky's a crystal staff user that can do a lot. His starburst skill is an okay XL crystal attack that reduces the power and intelligence of enemies while at the same time inflicting rage and activating this interesting counter attack skill that restores the team's HP and statuses whenever he's hit. His starlight skill also gives him a barrier that at the same time improves his magic critical rate. Like the other free Chrono Cross collab characters, another thing that makes Starkey special is that you can equip him with unique elemental skills that don't have to be crystal based. For example, you can give him the element called Black Hole which enables him to inflict a shade type magic attack on all enemies. This makes Starkey potentially useful for essentially any kind of elemental team you want because the element system 
makes him and his other Chrono Cross collab free characters pretty versatile. You unlock Starkey through the Chrono Cross collab through the Planet Eater side quest after completing the Surge route. Last but not least, we have Nona, another style. Why is she in this list? Because she's Nona, man. How can you not like Nona? Besides the fact that she sounds a bit like Nana, like a grandma, but she's definitely not a grandma. Nona's story, her artwork, her personality, man, I really hope they bring Nona to the main story of the game. WFS, if you're watching this, please, please put her in the main story and make her compete with Azumi and Shani for Aldo's heart. Do it, make her win. Besides the fact that Nona's important to the Wanderer and the Vortex Apocrypha Saga story, her another style is a surprisingly decent support character. Nona is a character in the game who's all about love and devotion, which is why her basic skill allows her to put a devotion stack on a specific character. That devotion stack adds 30% of Nona's stats, except HP and MP, to that character, making them an incredible damage dealer. And true to her personality, Nona is happy to give the 30% stats to the character at the cost of losing the 30% stats herself, meaning she's happy to sacrifice herself for the benefit of others. But there's a twist to this. Since Aldo is so special to Nona, if she stacks devotion on Aldo, she won't lose the 30% stats, and she also gives Aldo a 30% boost to his HP and MP because she's in love with him. To show even more support, Norna will activate the attack stance of the unit she's devoted to. So if she's devoted to Aldo, who's a sword slash user for example, she will activate dazzling slash stance. If she stacks the devotion to a staff user, she'll deploy magic fate stance and so on. Nona is a water piercing unit and the strongest attack skill, Castigo, is a 3 times XL water type attack that can change in type and buff according to the unit she's devoted to. So if she's devoted to Aldo, instead of her attack being a water piercing attack, it will become a fire slash instead. Nona another style can also add a barrier to the team, restore HP and restore statuses, and can increase weapon and critical type damage of all party members for 5 turns. Overall, Nona another style is a fantastic free support character. This is a great reminder for me to personally start using her more often again. Now, let's look at my top 5 damage dealing free characters. At number 5, we have Serene another style! Serene is a sus teacher who whips her misbehaving students. What else could you want? I have a sneaking suspicion she's based on Kistis from Final Fantasy VIII. She's an Earth character in a special trio of unlockable free characters that include Azami, who's wind, and Garyu, who's fire. Serene is a pretty decent earth piercing and blunt unit who's easy to understand and if done right can be pretty good against mobs. She inflicts flash strike stance if there are 4 or more RDA school or outlaw personality units in the party and can actually serve as your team's pain setup with a skill binding whip. Her skill Era of the Conqueror is an earth blunt attack on all enemies that reduces their resistances, inflicts break, while at the same time increasing the critical and magical critical rate of all party members. She also gets progressively stronger the more RDA school or outlaw members you have in the team. You unlock Serene another style by first getting her normal style in RDA school. I've done a whole guide on the process which you can check out. Like Azami and Garyu, the other two characters I mentioned, Serene comes with a bunch of pretty fun side quests and boss fights that back in the day were pretty challenging. She also has a manifest weapon as well as her own Astral Archive term challenge where you can unlock Grasta and equipment suitable for her skill set. At number 4 we have Garyu True Manifest. Garyu is a member of the trio I just mentioned and like Serene, his side quests are pretty fun even if the boss battles aren't as hard as they used to be. Garyu is a great flame staff user that increases the intelligence of all party members and increases max damage of staff characters by 50% while giving himself a 100% increase in damage with his skill called Explosion. Even today, Garyu True Manifest deals fantastic damage. To unlock Garyu, you need to have finished chapter 16 of the main story, then start fighting the Flame Eater boss in Zol Plains. Garyu also has an another style version available who isn't as good as his true manifest version but is still fun and unlocking nonetheless. Like with Serene, Garyu has his own unique Astral Archive tome that when completed give you useful grasser and equipment to improve his skill set. Remember, this version of Garyu I'm talking about is only decent 
decent if you've unlocked his true manifest version. At number three, we have Curio. Curio is one of the only free characters that can awaken your zone, and he does this when activating Lunatic. By the way, if you need help understanding how zone awakening works, check out my zone guide, which I've linked in the description. It's super useful in battle. So, Curio is a wind and shade slash user whose various skills can increase your team's power and intelligence, as well as the sword, katana, and axe equip characters damage by 50%, and wind and shade type attack of all party members by 50%. A couple of Curio skills also improve if you've beaten the boss, ARPX Sophie. For example, his skill Ups and Downs, a multi hit wind slash skill, gets stronger the more. RDA or Lost Lab personality characters you have in the team. He is also a pain and poison setter which is super useful and Curio's skills become even better if you unlock his weapon called Regret which you can unlock after beating the boss EPS-209 Murphy. You can unlock Curio by playing the Elzion Logic and Scales Future Mythos Saga. At number 2 we have Azami Another Style. Who here is from Team Azami? I've mentioned Serene, I've mentioned Garyu, now it's Azami's turn. Azami is the third member of the special free character trio. She's a wind slash character that's a pain setter. The first and main reason you'd want Azami in other style is because of her awkward side quests with Aldo. I don't want to spoil anything, but I would rather her end up with Aldo than Shani. There, I said it! You unlock Azami in other style by first unlocking Azami normal style, finishing a side quest and then going to Rinde. From here you'll have to face a series of boss battles and quirky little side stories. Like Garyu, another enjoyable part about Azami is that unlocking her full potential can require hours of decent gameplay. Her normal style has a manifest weapon you can unlock, then a true manifest weapon, and unlocking her in other style can be a bit of a challenge for new players too. Like with Serene and Garyu, Azami normal style also has an astral archive challenge that unlocks some beneficial Grasta and equipment for her. Now at number 2 we have Rise! Rise is the latest free character in another Eden who you can unlock while playing the Cliffs of Wormrest Rise Saga. By the time of making this video, we only have the 5 star water piercing version of Rise, but this week they're going to announce the final part of the Rise Saga, and I'm expecting a potential stellar awakening and even another style version of her, making her even stronger. As of now, Rise is a decent, easy to use ish water piercing damage dealer who, through the Dragon Killer stance and a sidekick Iridian, can deal some pretty decent water damage. Iridian, by the way, is also a free sidekick you can unlock by simply playing. The Rise Saga Chapter 2. What also makes Rise special is that she's a sacred water stance setter. And like the other official members of the Rise Saga Arcadia crew, if there are four Arcadia members in the front line, you can change the entire front line team's elemental type to whatever elemental zone is activated. In Rise's case, it's the water elemental zone. Stay tuned for the latest Rise update to see her updated skill set if it does come around. At number one, last but not least, the bestest, mostest heroic dude with no crotch protection. That is number one, Aldo Ichiban. Aldo is a fire slash and non-type attack character. The non-type part of his attack is especially useful when you encounter a super boss like the Death Eater, for example, who I hate, who at some stages I believe only takes damage from non-type attacks. Aldo is a great mob damage dealer with a series of skills that weaken the enemy and strengthen his own and the team's attacks. And he has a number of attack skills that increase in damage the more light points he and other members of the team have. Aldo's unique weapon, Ogre Arankaram Light, increases Aldo's power, removes buffs and debuffs from the enemy and reduces their intelligence, power and speed. Not only that, if you've unlocked the right Stellar Awakening skill, and if there are four Guiding Light members in the front line, you start each battle with a full Anala Force gauge, which is super useful for hard level dungeons and bosses. I have a number of guides that I've linked in the description that will help you max Aldo out, and plus he's a hero of the game. What more could you want? Now let's end this video with two bonus characters that have a special place in my heart. At number one, we have Straw Boy. Would you use Straw Boy to help you win any battle? today? Probably not, but look at him, he's cute! And there's something fun about building him up. For those who don't know how Straw Boy works, what happens is once he reaches level 80, you can reincarnate him to be a completely new type of character. 
For example, in one reincarnation, he can be a fire blunt type of character. In another, he can be a water based healer. And another cool thing about Straw Boy is that for each reincarnation, he gets a new light point, making him one of the only units in the game that you can predictably create light points for for free. One way of seeing him be used is as a light point filler for another dungeons that require a certain number of light points to get all the rewards. If your other characters don't have too many light points, a straw boy in this team with lots of light points can help you fulfill the necessary light points required to get the most rewards from that specific another dungeon. You unlock straw boy in chapter 58 of the main story. And last is Kid. <laughs> Kid is a fire slash unit who was a must have in my party a couple of years ago. For me, she was particularly useful for her Z steal skill, which not only steals from the enemy, but is a great buff and debuff skill. It reduces your enemy's power, intelligence and speed by 20% and increases your team's power, intelligence and speed by 20%. She also has a number of skills that reduce enemy resistances while increasing everyone's damage. For the Chrono Cross loyalists, Kid along with Surge, Sparky, and Harley are must-have free characters who you can unlock for free with a Chrono Cross collab. Like the other free Chrono Cross characters, another thing that makes Kid unique is the fact that you can help equip her with elemental skills that don't have to be fire-based. For example, one skill you could equip Kid with is Healing Wind, which is a wind element skill that heals everyone. There are a lot of other gacha characters that have power crept Kid, but I still find myself returning to her once in a while. So there's my top list of free characters. These are based on my own personal experiences and from what I've seen others accomplish. Who are your favorites? Share them below or if you have any questions, I'm sure someone will be able to help. If this helped you in any way, like, subscribe or become a super member, baby.